Electric vehicle charging can be a real pain in the, well, you know what, but we'll help you understand and make the most of at-home charging on this episode of EV Basics. If you're not powering your EV up at home, you need to. This is what really unlocks the magic of electric vehicle ownership. You can leave the house every day with a full battery and in normal use, never worry about problem prone public charging. It's like driving a combustion powered car or truck and never having to visit the gas station. Well, unless you need snacks or a bathroom break and I need both of those pretty regularly. Now in this video, we'll help you overcome some of the stumbling blocks that can be barriers to charging at home. But first, let's cover a few fundamentals. Practically speaking, there are two ways to juice up your EV at home. Level one and level two charging, both of which use AC power. As you might imagine, level one charging is the most basic option and by far the slowest because level one chargers plug into standard 110 volt household power outlets. Now this is super convenient because you've probably got these plugs all around your home and garage, so nothing has to be installed or rewired to do this. The downside to level one charging, of course, is speed, as it typically only adds maybe three miles of range to an EV per hour, which is agonizingly slow compared to other options. Now, this may work perfectly fine for motorists that don't travel very far, but for most drivers, having a level two charger is much better and really the only option. As I mentioned a moment ago, level two charging also taps into your home's AC power, but at 240 volts, this makes charging dramatically quicker. Vehicles can usually absorb 30 miles of range or more per hour, while level two charging, and that is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> Bless you. The new Chevy Equinox EV, for instance, is rated by the manufacturer at 34 miles per hour, enough to completely replenish the battery pack in around nine hours, ideally while you sleep, which most people will need to do. Similarly, Genesis estimates its lovely electrified GV70 SUV can level two charge from 10% to 100% full in about seven hours. Now, it's also worth noting that while level two charging at home is quick and convenient, it is nowhere near as powerful as DC fast charging, which can add hundreds of miles of range to a vehicle per hour. So don't expect DC performance from your AC charger not that you necessarily need it. Another benefit of some level two hardware is bi-directional charging. Now this gets complicated and expensive because you do need additional hardware, but if there's a blackout, bi-directional charging lets your EV seamlessly and almost instantly power your entire home, which is super nice. Basically, this makes everything work in reverse. Rather than the charger juicing up your EV, the vehicle takes stored electricity and sends it directly into your home's electrical system. And we have an entire EV Basics episode dedicated to bi-directional charging, so look that up for a deep dive. Honestly, level two charging works like magic, but it is not a perfect solution. The problem is that installation work may be required and that can be seriously expensive. If you don't already have 240 volt power in your garage or carport, you'll have to call an electrician to run new wiring. Additionally, if your home is older, it may require an electrical service upgrade, which can cost thousands of dollars. So be aware of these unexpected costs beyond the price of a level two charger itself. Another issue with at-home charging, one that applies to both level one and level two options, is that not every driver has a garage or carport. Beyond that, people that live in townhomes or apartments may not have a place to park their vehicle, and if that's the case, they certainly won't be able to install a 240 volt outlet. For these drivers, I don't have a good answer. You pretty much have to rely on public offerings, either level two or DC fast chargers, either that or run an extension cord to a neighboring home or business, but I don't think you really wanna do that when even running a cable from your own home to the street can get you fined by the local authorities. 
Although we don't recommend buying an EV unless you can charge at home, if you decide to go all in on public charging, consider signing up for a loyalty program. This can reduce your per kilowatt hour rate in exchange for a monthly fee. But now that I've dashed your home charging hopes, allow me to bring you back from the brink. First, however, a few words from our sponsor, a little company called Michelin. Perhaps you've heard of them. For 135 years, Michelin has been innovating for a better life in motion. From earth movers to air buses, race cars to rovers, we were even one of the first to consider sustainability in the design of our tires. And now our legacy as pioneers continues in the next revolution. With EV Ready tires designed for performance so you don't have to think about tires at all, you can just enjoy the endless wonders they unlock. To help find the right tire for your earth mover, commercial airliner, or yes, even electric vehicle, head on over to michelinman.com. Alternatively, you can scan the convenient on-screen QR code or hit the link in the description box down yonder. Thank you, Michelin, for your support of EV Basics. Okay, so here are some tips to possibly solve your home charging conundrums. Number one, if you think you can't afford to install a charger, check for incentives from the federal government, your state, municipality, or even utility company. Many states offer a significant tax credit when you install a charger. Similarly, the power company may offer a rebate to help offset the cost. Example, my local electric utility, DTE, will give me $500 back if I install an Energy Star certified charger or one that's from the same manufacturer as my EV. Here's another tip. If you can't afford or don't want to have a service upgrade, consider tapping into the existing 240 volt circuit used by your electric clothes dryer. By using a smart splitter, you can plug both your dryer and your EV in. When the dryer turns on, your charger turns off so you don't trip the circuit breaker. When drying is finished, EV charging automatically resumes. Bonus tip, this same kind of device can be used to balance the load in a two EV household. One vehicle is chosen as the primary, and when it finishes juicing up, the second car can start charging. Tip number three, to live the best EV life, make sure you buy the appropriate level two charger for your vehicle, and we have a link to some great options down in the description box. If your car or truck has a CCS port, that's this one, you may not want a charger with a Tesla slash NAX slash SAE J3400 plug. This one. Yes, there are adapters, so you can easily switch between these two standards, but it's just simpler to have the appropriate one for your vehicle. That said, if you're into future proofing, know that virtually all new EVs are expected to switch over to the J3400 standard within the next few years. Next up, when installing a charger, make sure the cable will reach your EV's power port. It'd be a shame if you put the thing in the left corner of your garage when your vehicle socket is located on the right rear fender. This is common sense, but something to keep in mind. Because charging port placement isn't standardized and because your first EV is not likely to be your last, a centrally located installation, if possible, makes a lot of sense. And, by the way, if you don't have a garage or carport, look into a weatherproof charger with a NEMA rating of three or higher. And it's surprising that we still have to say this, but yes, you can safely charge in the rain. Tip number five will vary based on your location and possibly the time of year, but it's a smart idea to schedule your vehicle's at-home charging during off-peak hours. Doing so can save you a good chunk of change. For example, if it's August and you live in southern Texas, assuming they can keep the power grid running at all, electricity demand might be the highest during the heat of the day, when businesses are open and every air conditioner is running at full blast. The power company is smart to incentivize drivers to charge, say, in the middle of the night when usage is lower. You may be able to get a much lower per kilowatt hour rate by being strategic like this, and it's generally a simple matter to program your EV to only charge during off-peak hours. And finally, if you really want to go all in on the EV lifestyle, consider installing solar panels on your house or garage to further reduce your at-home charging costs. So overall, the best advice we can share is this. 
if you can, install a level two AC charger at home. This will eliminate a lot of headaches and allow you to take full advantage of your electric vehicle. Home charging is one thing, but are you benefiting from all the unique features your EV provides? One you need to learn about is called One Pedal Driving. Find out what it is and why you should use it. Click right here, right now, to watch this episode of EV Basics.